So welcome everybody. It's great to see 44 people on just now. Uh, Heather's going to host this evening and I'm just going to pass over to Heather. Thanks Ken. Even everybody, <clears throat> it's great to see so many people here. Um, just wanted to try and kick off a conversation at last week's forum. The theme that people were really interested in was talking about new clubs or new opportunities, um, but don't uh, groan on two counts. <laughs> it's not wholly about that, um, because I've had to think about things in between. I want to ask you some other questions just to be a bit more provocative. And the other thing was on reflection, and I was chatting to Ken about this, we can cover all of the different forms that Rotary is beginning to take, whether it's some kind of direct membership or cause-based clubs, hybrid clubs, e-clubs, e we can cover that in the discussion. But I thought what might be really useful to kick off the discussion was a little bit of a reminder about, you know, what draws us to Rotary. Um, when I was an AG and I went around talking to clubs, you know, one of the kind of key messages that I used to take out with me is, you know, we're the greatest champions of Rotary. You know, the most effective um, way to get people involved in Rotary is really just to, and Ken said this before, what's your catch line again, Ken, about your, what's your elevator pitch for Rotary? It's the best thing I ever did. Yeah, so Ken, Ken set in the bar there, um, but that whole thing about actually just telling people what it means to use a way to get people involved. So just a couple of things that um, struck me when I was having a think about uh, tonight um, that I would just like you to hold in your minds as we have the, the discussion tonight. The first one is from um, Evan Burrell. Um, some of you will know him. Give me a wave if you know him, um, who is a Rotarian who is pretty prolific on Facebook. And um, one of the things that he has put up recently that made me just really think about, about this, and it sort of started to make me think about relevance, you know, how do we make Rotary relevant? How do we get people to understand that Rotary is relevant to them? It's a little bit like the message coming from um, Paul Garnack as well, is that it's not about numbers, it's about the experience. And if you think about those we've had on in the past few weeks on the forum, talking about the experience in starting up one of the newer clubs, it's all about these things, isn't it? It's all about building relationships and um, telling people the story of what Rotary is and can be and, um, and doing what we can to get people to come on the journey that's, that's really important to us. And I just really like that you don't want numbers, you want Rotarians, which made me then think as well about um, that whole thing. Um, Oh, Alistair, I like it when you agree with me. Send me more things like that in the chat. That'll, that'll, uh, that'll make me feel better. And then, um, and so this one is a little bit more formal, but you can actually get the sentiment. And that this is really the whole thing, isn't it? We get so passionate about Rotary because, because we love it and we absolutely get um, what it's all about. But I mean, really, it's the experience, isn't it? And we want to share that experience and we want people to, to basically come on that journey. And it's how we... How we get the balance right, I think, between um, being kind of um, rotary evangelists, but, but, but I would think rotary storytellers, that we want people to come and have that experience with us. And I think if we can have the right experience in existing clubs and create new experiences where we need to do that, that's how we spread rotary. And that's my, that's my provocation for this evening. So I have a little poll um, or a couple of quick polls just to start off with just now just to see if we're on the same page because if we're not this could be a very lonely evening for me <laughs> and a very short visit to the forum if I get heckled off so Ken's going to put a couple of quick polls up for me can you put the first one up Ken please so that's it up what do what do we need most in Rotary now and for the future is it new clubs is it better experience in existing clubs or is it both So they're piling in. We've currently got 53 on. Well, that's great. Make Rotary fun. Yeah, it's all about the experience. Is that you that said that, Don? There's some really good stuff in the chat here. Thank you. Well, I'm glad that everybody has that same, yeah. same sense. Of, it's all about the experience and numbers will follow. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what are, what's the results telling us then? Are people, are people saying the same thing as their fingers are walking, Ken? Right, so 44 have done. I'm just going to finish the polling there and just share the results. So 
um, two said new clubs, um, and I'll, I'll speak to them after. Better, <laughs> better experiences in existing clubs was 24, and 20 said we need both, both new clubs and better experiences. So that was really interesting results there. I mean, I suspect it's a mix of all of those things. It's where we need to put the emphasis will depend on what's already happening in an area. Was it, was it Mark Maloney that did that whole thing that you've done before with the bit of um, paper, Ken, about, you know, if you start to kind of... Because, yeah. because I, guess, I guess what I really think is um, it's, it's about people. And so um, I want to ask you um, another thing, just on the back of that, with that in your head and with um, those two quotes in your head, I just want to ask you another quick poll and then um, just to get some more thoughts and comments from you. Can you put the one with the statements up, please, Ken? Yeah. So I've, I've put the questions in there. So this is quite a, a, one, one just for a bit to read. There's such a risk you should want what we have. And I think you have to start with the people you want to involve so you don't slip into that. Or our job is not to give people what they want, but what they need. So what do you think? Which one is most important? What do you agree with most between those two? So, um, while you're doing that, um, just to say to you, that first quote is from a woman called Nina Simon, not Nina Simone, don't get carried away, Ray was starting to dance there, thing about a book. Um, yeah, and um, she wrote this book called The Art of Relevance, and she absolutely transformed an art and cultural centre in Santa Cruz in America and our whole premise is um, making what you have got relevant to people or what you can do relevant to people and she started this movement called Of, By, For, All which is basically you do it with people, you do it for people and it's done by the communities themselves and there seemed to me to be a lot of resonances with Rotary and I guess one is very much of that ilk and another one is actually why don't people get it? Why don't we just tell them what they need? So what are we getting back then, results? So we've got, we've got 39. I'll, I'll just stop it there. That's a, a minute and a half that's been on. Um, and we'll just share that results with everyone. So 54%, there's a risk of you should want what we have. And 46% says it, it, our job is not to give people what they want, but what they need. So it's, it's pretty even. I can't hear anything. I'm going to just switch it on. You have to select. Um, it should be the same as usual. So that was quite evenly split then. That's quite interesting. Does anybody, you don't, have to, you don't have to say which way you voted, but does anybody want to comment on what they think about the way the votes have come out there and what we think that might mean? So again, just to help, if you, if you click on participants and click um, hold your hand up, we'll see that in the list of people. We've got 56 on, so we can't see everyone. Um, so if you... Yeah. Don't know. I mean, I guess one way, one way to interpret the statements, I mean, I suppose what, what I think around relevance is the focus is on people and I guess that's the point I was trying to make and I suppose it's a bit like lots of things you know we can either say to people here's our offer you want to buy it you know do you want to come and join it or um, actually start with what people are telling us that they want and become that and maybe it is a mix of approaches I think Diane wants to come in Diane do you want to unmute yourself come in I found it a very, I found it a very difficult choice to make because of the wording of the question. I don't know if anyone else found that or not, but I, I didn't feel it was a one or the other somehow. There was some, there was something about the, the way they were worded that it, it, it wasn't an either or or a compar an equal comparison. I don't know if that's just my reading of them. But sorry. No, I, I think that I think that's fair enough, and I, and I think t to an extent it was meant to be provocative, and it was also deliberate because there is a bit of ambiguity, isn't there? I mean, people could read those quickly and say, actually, you know, we just need to, we just need to tell people what they need to find out. You know, they need to find out that rotor is an amazing thing, and and come on it. They just don't know that they want it yet, but they absolutely need it. 
or you could be saying, actually, are we having the right conversations with the right people? Are we telling them all about um, the experience they can have? Are we telling them about the Rotary story? Are we inviting them to come on the journey? Do we know what journey they want to go on? And I guess that was really that was really what was in my mind. Yeah, I think the trouble with with any survey question is sometimes the way you word it wanting a particular result. Not, I'm not saying you want it to be one or the other, but you, you're looking for particular facts, but we don't necessarily see what it is you're looking for with the way that the question's worded. And, as I say, uh, statistics are um, yeah, yeah. those funny things. But fortunately for us, fortunately for us, um, we don't have to be submitting them to the National Statistics Office because I don't think my um, survey expertise would stretch to that. I guess it is just, just more of a kind of conversation starter. What about that whole thing that Evan Burrell was saying about, you know, you've got to invite people to come on the journey. Do people feel that they do that? When, when, put, put your hands up. When, uh, have you asked somebody or told somebody your rotary story? It's not necessarily asked them to be a member. Have you spoken about your rotary story in the past month? If you have, pop your hand up physically or in the little blue hand. Yeah, Paul says he hasn't. Yeah, Derek's put his hand up. And I've got a couple of people coming in. Yeah. So um, Derek, and then we'll come on to Jennifer and Bobby. Derek, did you want to say something or were you answering my question? Derek, you're muted. You'll need to unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry about the delay. Have you got me now? Yes. Got you now, Derek, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess, yes, you're asking if I told somebody the story. I mean, I have spoken to quite a number of people. Uh, about why I enjoy Rotary, um, but I guess part of the problem is getting that over uh, in terms of uh, what we do and what relevance that has to the person that you're speaking to, to be honest. Um, and uh, that tends to be very dependent on their outlook. Um, obviously, people like to be... Uh, uh, you know, to, to get involved in um, helping people, um, and so on. If they're that, and if they're that way minded, then I guess they take an interest in what we do. Um, but there's so little publicity, of course, generally about what Rotary does, and I know we do a lot of work on it, but uh, it, it's not on uh, international uh, national television or radio or whatever, somehow we don't get that message over. Thanks Derek. Um, I know Jennifer, um, I don't know if it's Jennifer or Bobby that wants to come in, I see your hand as well um, Don. Jennifer um, is on the Public Image Committee so I don't know if your comment's relevant but it would be useful to hear what you no. might want to say in response to Derek as well Jennifer. It's t totally personal I think. We. Um, I'm trying to think, what in, it's not so much the Rotary story, but what has enthused us is talking about some of the international things we've done and the, the people that you can meet through Rotary when you go to a convention, for example, um, and just the things you hear about. Um, I, and that, in, that inspires people when they see the bigger picture of Rotary. Uh, we did a Jaipur Lim project in, in Calcutta and it was just wonderful to go out there and you could come home and show people and say, you, you can do this. This is the sort of thing you can actually achieve through Rotary. Um, I think you have to have something interesting and inspiring that has actually enthused you so you can put the enthusiasm over. I mean, the one, one of the stories I tell is about going to the International Convention in Copenhagen years ago which was the first convention we'd ever been to. And I have this lovely photograph of me with the chief of the Danish defense staff with his arm around my shoulders. Because we just happened to go to this, uh, the, the social thing was a, a meeting for, have you vanished? It was the um, home hospitality and it was for the waifs and strays. And for the waifs and strays, it happened to be with the chief of the Danish defense staff who was a member of Copenhagen Rotary. And it was in the, um, that wonderful uh, 
Castello at, at, at Copenhagen and it was just things you can do with Rotary that you wouldn't have a chance to do as, a, as an individual person out in the real, alone in the wide world. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think it does make sense. I like that whole thing about um, it's a very personal. Um, Don, uh, Don from Howard Five, you wanted to come in as well, and then I see Derek's got his hand up as well. Yes, I, yes, I just want to make the comment that um, I feel it's time that we look to having a professional uh, person look at Rotary and help us in that way, rather than everybody trying to do their own thing. It would be much easier if we all, uh, if there was we had a proper publicity machine looking after us, but I don't know how many people would agree with that. Yeah, well, we, it'd be interesting to see what people um, what people come in with on that. Interesting enough, myself and uh, Ken and uh, DJ Alistair had a really good productive meeting with um, John Holm, who chairs the Public Image um, Committee, and I know that he and the team um, there's lots of really relevant knowledge and experience there. I think there's a really strong team there. I think they do need help from the clubs and I suspect they probably want a slot in this forum to ask for that help, but also to have a conversation about how we can all work together more effectively to get that rotary message out there as well. But yeah, no, I hear what you're saying, Don. Now, um, who have we got? Um, uh, David, David, did you want to come in? Is it David Fryer and then Derek? You're muted. You're mu David. muted yourself, David. <clears throat> right. Okay, this time I clicked the right button the right time. <clears throat> I think we've all got our own Rotarian story to tell. <clears throat> Here's mine. And what enticed me years ago to join <clears throat> was seeing Rotarians doing things. And I'm going to echo what was said a moment ago. <clears throat> it's about doing extraordinary things by ordinary people. And for me, <clears throat> that links to the second part, <clears throat> it's being part of a worldwide humanitarian organization. And that there's people like us <clears throat> in all four corners of the world, thinking, caring, and wanting to do things. I'm going to finish on this point, <clears throat> touch of history. I'm told it's attributed to a Roman general who once said, past glory is a poor feeding. And I often find Rotarians are very good at talking about what happened in the past and it stops there. <clears throat> so that's my challenge. We need to think where are we going, not where have we come from. Otherwise, <clears throat> we'll just keep talking to ourselves and we won't bring in so many other folk who've got beating Rotarian hearts who like what we do, but they don't want to go to meetings and they don't want to eat. Thanks, David. Um, Derek, again, please, and then Alistair Walker. Yeah, just very quickly, I went to Hamburg this, uh, last year, and uh, I found that uh, that was, that, that, I mean, that, that impressed me greatly. And if somehow that could be got over to people, maybe who uh, were actually in Rotary or interested in Rotary, that might make a difference if they had a chance to see some of that. Thanks, thanks for that, Derek. Alistair? Uh, I, I've been an, an exponent of Rotary now for almost 30 years, and someone who's uh, endeavoured to attract new members, and the uh, constant feedback I get from people is, it's a bit stuffy, it's old men, it's a bit too formal, you've got these attendance rules. Now, in uh, the most vibrant clubs and the most successful clubs, they're less formal, they have a great fellowship and friendship together uh, and they enjoy each other's company and on the back of that they go out and serve. I, I think trouble is far too many clubs are too formal. You know, we have the usual rigmarole, all the toasts and everything at a club meeting and you, you only get 20 minutes of a speaker. We need, we need to change how we do it to make it more attractive to young people. That's what I think. But as I've said before, we're trying to put new wine and old wineskins and the world is changing and we have to change with it. I agree with that. Thanks, Alistair. That's really helpful. So another quick poll for you just now. Right. Here it goes. How, how good is your club at promoting what you do and what Rotary is all about out with your own club members? Are you very good? 
fairly good. Um, not as good as I think we need to be. So that's 50, 50 plus out of 57. And John Minhinnick will come to you just in a second. Uh, could, could I make up um, Robin Warthog? Go for it. Robin Warthog, could I make a comment? Yes, of course. I tell you, regarding your, your last um, discussion, but is, is it ever been thought that, that um, Rotary do a documentary? To promote what 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 we do oh. over the world, I'm I'm, I'm going to ask um, one of our past district governors, Kath, if she's any info on that. Yeah, Kath. Um. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I, I remember that um, probably about ten years ago there was a documentary, but it was on the radio. And it was probably the worst bit of publicity we've ever had, because um, it, it, if, it, if I hadn't known better, I would have thought it was some sort of comedy turn, because what they talked about in Rotary was our constant toasts, our constant raffles, uh, that sort of thing. I think the problem is with um, a documentary is we would have to pay for someone to do it. Uh, there isn't money in the subscription to do that. If we wanted that, for example, in Rotary in Great Britain and Ireland, our fees would go up, I would guess, at least by 10 or 20 pounds a year. So I think that it's incumbent upon us all to um, actually um, use the publicity that we have for our own clubs. Because one of the things is that the Rotary Club experience that you get in one place will be different to the Rotary Club experience you get somewhere else. Um, I think it was Alistair typed something up earlier on. Uh, I, I think it was in 2014 uh, that at the annual business meeting of Rotary in Britain and Ireland, we voted against having a levy for extra publicity. And it's not been picked up since. It's, it's, it's the cost of it, I would think. Um, but a, a person who would be good with a response to this is uh, past our IBI president, John Minhinnick, who has always and been a great one for communications. Thanks, Kath. And seamlessly, of course, John's already got his little blue hand up. So, John, can I bring you in on the point you wanted to make and anything that you can add to Kath's points, please? OK, thank you for that. Um, the, the bit about um, getting the story over has really got to start at a fundamental level. I remember in 2012-13 when I was travelling around Rotary meeting the Rotary Club of Horsham. I remember it for two reasons. The hotel they put us up in had a television screen in the shower and a television screen at the end of the bath, so it was quite luxurious. But um, my main point was they were a Rotary Club that got themselves very well known in the local community. Uh, they were involved with the local community in setting up uh, events um, in, in the town uh, which happened every six or eight weeks and the banner in the in the high street mentioned it was Rotary involved and that was where they started people get to know what they did and that's where they started getting a whole load of volunteers to come along to join in not not brainwashing in any way not selling Rotary to them at all but getting involved in what they were doing in the community and ultimately, those people got so involved in helping them that they said, can we come and join you? But the fundamental there was the community knowing what Rotary was by what Rotary was doing. So having videos and all those kind of things are all very nice. And I've noticed on the chat line, one or two people talking about getting an expert. I think Don from Howard Five said about getting experts in. We've got all the experts we need within Rotary. The trouble is, we've got this stupid classification system, whereas you could have a skills system. 
you can have skills on the RI database. You can have your skills recorded. Uh, my vivid memory is when I was on the RIB executive, when we did our first marketing plan, um, when we had that funny blue and yellow tie, um, we, we didn't know who were the marketeers as members. We soon found them when we issued our first marketing plan and they all come out of the woodwork and complain. But the expertise we need within Rotary is there, but we don't actually know it. And in fact, even within our own clubs, we don't really know the expertise of the people in our club. And I use the story against myself. My classification says I'm a meteorologist. Now, I don't want anyone to answer the next question because the next question is, what use am I to Rotary as a meteorologist? Now, no questions, no answers are wanted. But it gives you a good example. It doesn't tell you that I've been involved in personal management, project management, uh, computing research, and those kind of things. And I think that's where we're missing out. We've got the resources, and we're not using them properly. Mm. But we've got to start at the basic level of telling people, showing people what we do, not just telling what we do. And the Horsham example is, is a very good example of how they got very much involved with the Horsham local authority. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Um, Thanks, John. That's really that is really helpful, actually. Sure and I mean, I guess I guess where we might where we might start is um, without with finding out or knowing that we have found out as much as we can about the people within our own clubs and our own team, whether that be the district team or whether that be our own clubs as well. And um, that kind of rounded set of skills that we all have that sometimes we're not very good at talking about. And um, did you put the poll results up again, Ken, or did I do that? I've just, no, I've just put it up. So there's okay. the one in seven said we're very good. Um, in fact, it's one in eight said we're very good. Um, a third said we're fairly good. And more than half said, mm, must try harder. Yeah. So, so it is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that's, uh, that's definitely shared, I think, and people think we need to do something about. I, I think the challenges with these issues which keep coming up and we keep talking about it is you can go off into, you, you, you know, the, the road splits, doesn't it? And you can go down the, oh, for goodness sake, are we going to keep talking about this forever and not do anything about it? Or we go to, down the other road and we actually come up with some specific actions that we can, that we can take. Does anybody want to put their big ticket item into the chat or put their hand up and tell us about it? What's the one big thing? either that you want to take away and do because you're thinking about it tonight, that you've done, or you think that we should be doing, whether it's at district level or RGB and I level, RI level, what's, what's the big ticket stuff? How do we actually, how do we, I suppose how we become the change we want to make, really? So Roy. Roy, yeah. Um, it's just a question to other clubs. Facebook. Definitely works for us. Like when we do census, like we have thousands of people. Um, but how many clubs allow all the members to update Facebook? I think we've restricted it to four people. But even out of those four people, I'm thinking I'm, I'm the only one who updates it regularly. Even though I encourage people to send me stuff and I put it on Facebook, it's very hard to get people to get into the habit of publicising. Facebook, I think somebody else has just put it in the chat, Facebook is the best thing. Yeah, that, that's a really interesting point actually, Roy. Um, Alistair, DG Alistair, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you and Claire, I think, or Claire was doing some work on this yesterday, and you've got some really up-to-date information, haven't you, about Facebook usage by clubs? Yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting. Um, there are only two clubs in the district who do not have a Facebook page. Uh, so that's 87 out of 89 have a Facebook page. Um, I can't remember the exact figures because I don't have them in front of me. Um, but we were something like 94% of the ones who were on Facebook um, are actually using it regularly. So 94% of clubs out there have, uh, in fact, I think, it was, I think it was about a third of clubs, um, about 33% are posting weekly. But almost all clubs, 94%, are, are, um, are able to post at least once a month and have posted within the last month. So um, it is being used. It's maybe not being used as effectively as it could be and, and, and as well as it could be, but certainly most clubs are aware of it. We just need to encourage a, a wee bit more usage, I think. 
Thanks, Alistair. I was just really interested in that because sometimes you get the impression, I know there's um, a comment in the chat that, you know, that there, there are some issues about IT expertise and, you know, I, suppo I suppose support for using technology. I think so, surely, with what some of what's happened around lockdown, one of the opportunities, I think, is a greater familiarisation with technology, generally. The other thing is, where are we looking for members? Because that's a discussion we were having with the PI team yesterday as well. Where are, where are we actually looking for members? Because we're not, we're not necessarily looking to offer an experience with, to the demographic that we've already got. I think we broadly agree with that. So the demographic we want is not the one that's not using social media. It's the one that is. Uh, and, I, and I think that's, that's important. It's about looking to the future, isn't it? Keep serving the members that we've got, retain the members we've got, have a great experience together, but share that experience. Who says, my son tells me Facebook is just for old folk. I, Instagram, I know I get told it's not Instagram. What's the other one? Is it, um, oh God, not Twitter, but is it, is it um, Twitter or TikTok it is as well. I TikTok, think. yeah. Yeah, um, we can only do it. Let's, let's, let's at least make a start on social media. So let's, get, let's get Facebook right and keep rolling. Um, does Neil, anybody else? Neil was yeah. playing. I was just trying to say that, I mean, in Kerry Muir, it's not a huge place, but we've got certainly plenty of talent in the town. And we now have a regeneration group who do some of the work in the parks that the council isn't doing now, and they keep the place tidy. They look after the camera obscura building up on the Kerry Hill. We've got a sustainable Kerry Muir group who are trying to make the town greener. So there are lots and lots of people volunteering to do lots and lots of things. but. Um, most of them know what Rotary looks like, but they aren't attracted to Rotary because they get satisfaction from what they're doing without being in Rotary. Yeah, and, and I guess the question for us is, if that's something that's really important to the community and we're not involved in it or facilitating or supporting it in some way, could we be doing something that complements that? Because then people will see the relevance. I don't know, it's different in every community, but I guess well, that's the point. How relevant we, are you to the community you're in? Yeah, well, we in Kerrymuir Rotary, we definitely work with these people as much as we can, but um, they all know that we want them into Rotary because there's other things that we can offer that they can't get on their own um, because Rotary has so, um, so many opportunities to get grants and all sorts of things, but um, they're just not attracted to Rotary the way it is at the moment, and that's why we're trying to change. So there's a, a good bit of conversation going on in the chat box that, interestingly, our youngest president in the district, uh, Alana, is saying, forget all right. that, TikTok's the way forward. TikTok's the way forward. Right, Alana, you're going to do a themed um, rotary forum on uh, some kind of like, you know, you get those idiots guide too, dummies guide too, we'll get one done uh, by you for TikTok. What do you think I'll about that? I'll be buzzing to do that. Okay, I'll listen, that. in all seriousness, tell us why that is the case. What what's what what is it? I think that, it you know what, I think like TikTok, just got, TikTok just got famous because it was like some for people to do in lockdown. I hadn't heard of TikTok before lockdown, to be honest. Um, and it, I thought I was just young people. I weirdly downloaded it as a joke, and I've I've become so obsessed with it. Like it's proper. Like I just go every time I go to my bed, I'm like I'll just go on TikTok for an hour, and I end up on it for like three hours. Um, just scrolling, and it's all different ages. I thought it was like young people. Yeah. Um, but it's not, and it's all and it's all different categories as well. So like, the way TikTok works is you have like a page, and it's called a for you page, and it um it brings up what it thinks is relevant to you, and it it takes that by what you hashtag on your profile. So think it knows what you like and what you post about. So therefore, it shows you things that that it thinks you would like. Um. So you could probably have someone started up that hashtag Rotary or hashtag, hashtag District 1010 or whatever. Um, and before you know it, it would probably blow up and you'd have everybody on it. But it is quite a hard thing to work if you're not, if you're not used to it and you've never been on it before. It takes, it takes a wee bit of time um, to get used to it. Like it took me time and I would consider myself quite young. <laughs> But there is people on it that are like even younger than me, um, and but then it, it probably does have some like there's no a lot of people um, 
that are older on it but there is there is quite a few like and as i say they they're looking at the relevant things for them because uh, their their for you page has filtered down of stuff that they would like so it, it could be used in a way if we so, knew how to do it properly and we knew so were you to, at the were you at the with your own club yesterday were you at the brag market yes yesterday did you put any of that on tiktok then no, but you know what, right? This is hilarious. And Alistair can actually back me up that this did happen. Somebody came up to the stall and was like, oh my God, I've seen you on TikTok. I watched your videos on TikTok. And I, I, had, I did a wee happy dance. I was like, oh my God, I'm famous. Like, this is so cool. Um, but really, that was a missed opportunity to, um, mm. like, I could have went live, like, and showed yeah. people on it. And, like, hashtag, like, where we were and what we're doing. And, but the only thing is that on my own one that would gain me followers but obviously i would rather like i, I didn't want to gain me followers i want to gain my club followers um but there, i could even use tiktok as a link to facebook <laughs> um so people watching tiktok could then click on and go right to your facebook um and then that might lead to that but as it is I don't, it needs to be done correctly um, there's a lot of things that could probably go wrong, um, but yeah. if it was just correctly, you could probably do quite well with TikTok, I think. Yeah, alongside other things, and it's and it's what I mean, it's what people are, want to use, but it's also who you're trying to target, isn't it? I mean, there's, Aye, there's it's who not... you're trying to target, and yeah. then that's what you pick with your hashtags. You you pick who you're trying to target, so you word you word your videos like certain ways to to pick up people that you want to see it. Brilliant. Um, and that's how it works. So if you use right, well, I've got, we've got you down for a social media tutorial <laughs> oh, no. or a tour of the clubs or something like that. Why not? Do you know? <laughs> um, Kath, Kath, I think you wanted to come in the back of that. Listen, Alana, thanks for coming in and doing that. That was really, that was really interesting. I'm sure it gave people a real insight into the opportunity as well as what it is as a platform. Kath, did you want to come in? Sorry, I thought that was very interesting and when I was at my podiatrist the other day, uh, she was telling me that she spent most of the time in lockdown on TikTok. But what I just wanted to say about social media and all the ways that we can use social media is that ultimately what we've got to do is have a good product to sell. And if we don't have a good product to sell, we can put it in every newspaper, on every Facebook page and everywhere and nothing will happen. So that's what we've, we've got to remember. I, I, I follow quite a few um, clubs on Facebook, not just in 1010, but anyone that I find. And, um, you know, I th I've said this before, so forgive me for saying it again, but people wanting to come to Rotary, I don't believe, and some of my young friends in my club tell me this, uh, I don't believe that they um, are attracted by simply saying that we support the food bank or something like that. We've got to show what what projects we do and how we're involved in them. That that's key to it, I think. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, I know. Thanks for that. I think that whole thing and that that's also about partnerships with other organisations. That focus on service and not just fundraising, which is something that's come up as a theme previously in the forum, hasn't it? Which is a, a good reminder. Yeah. What what is it that we're actually offering as an opportunity for people to get involved in? Absolutely. And then what do just... we use? Can I just say, that I think the last time I was on this forum, I mentioned that our <coughs> Rotary Club might get a grant from the Scottish Government because we'd been put forward by a partner club, the Fivefold Reaction, and yes, we got a £2,000 grant to help with our clothing bank. Um, Congratulations, so, well done. It's, it's, yeah, so, um, you know, it's, it's partnerships and things like that, that that do help. Yeah, yeah, and profile is really important for these partnerships for grants and fundraising, but for actually attracting people to come on the journey with us, which is kind of where we started, isn't it? That's kind of Evan Burrell's challenge for us. Um, we've got to tell the story as well as live the story, I think. Um, I want to just ask you another question, um, slightly, slightly tangential, uh, Ken. Which one do you want? The This, do, you want, do you want the fellowship one or the new club one? 
Um, I'll probably one. I'll probably one. Both do the fellowship one first, and then we'll do the other one, and then we'll pull the, the discussion anyway. together. Probably. How important is fellowship as part of your Rotary experience? Is it very important, somewhat, or is it just about the meal for you, or or not at all? Sorry, that was a bit provocative. <laughs> for fellowship refund. So the votes are piling in, so we've got 80% in so far. So we'll just give them another second or two. And it's quite interesting, there's been a lot of a discussion in the chat about having the right type of club, um, that kind of thing. Um, so that's it at 49 out of 55 of, of voted. So I'm just going to stop it there, and I think it's pretty conclusive. Uh, the fellowship is very important. There's two thirds said that, and really one person has said not at all. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting to hear what what they get out of Rotary. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But it's 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 not about the meal. There's nobody said it's about the meal. No, because there's, I think people are are beginning to kind of really get the point that there are other ways to come together and spend time. And maybe the example of using Zoom more recently. Um, is, is a really good example of that, still coming together as we are um, this evening as well, just around the, the whole experience. Um, yeah, so let's put that together with the last poll, Ken, if that's all right. Just another quick one. So, here you go. So it takes me to quarter past seven to go back to the question I was given to actually discuss with you this week, you know, because <laughs> I've widened out the whole issue. <laughs> So, given all of that, is there scope for a new club of some form in your area, um, offering a different experience? And just thinking, you know, some clubs don't want to change, and, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, but so, certainly the new clubs that we've, we've had in the district are very different. Um, and coming out of, you know, people's desires to do Rotary differently. Yeah. So we've, we've got about two thirds in so far, Heather. We'll just let it. That's good. Second. Just give it. Just give it another few seconds. I mean, I suppose this is the whole thing, isn't it? About we need a degree of honesty. You know, um, there's not a black and white. There's not a right and wrong answer. If we accept, as everything in the chat and every comment tonight has has kind of confirmed that this is all about the experience that that we offer, um, all about um, the value of that experience to people. Um, we either have or can create in our existing clubs that whole fellowship and service experience, those opportunities, we can sell that through the story, or we can, but we're still doing something really valuable. But if we can, is there something else that could be on offer in that community that would bring these people into Rotary that are never going to come into our club version of Rotary? I guess that's, that's the honesty point. So here, so here you go, and it's quite interesting. Mark Maloney last year, year challenged us, go and start a, a new club where there's an existing thriving club. And there's lots of good reasons for that. Um, but here's the results. 80% said um, yes or possibly. So, and uh, one, one, in, one, uh, twin, one in five said no, there's not. So right across the district, there's, there's a huge opportunity here for us. I think that's really, I think that's right. And I mean, I mean I'm mean, i not sure when I've kind of just had passing chats with people at, you know, district councils, district assembly, uh, district assemblies that I would have felt that whole, you know, 80% of people are saying actually maybe now is the time in the area that I'm in. And, and I suppose that's the work that the, that the membership committee have been trying to do as well, Ken. And so maybe this is, maybe if people are thinking, well, you know, possibly, maybe this is the point to um, maybe just give people a kind of brief reminder about the kinds of models that are on offer and where they would get more information about exploring some of that. Um, I, I can certainly help that. Anybody who's interested in the different models. I, I, get, I get kind of um, confused when people talk about the different models. And I was speaking to someone, one of my cohorts on the DGN trail, um, and he was asking which one he should promote. Should it be um, Rotary 2? Should it be this? Should it be that? Should it be. And I said, no, just find members and let them sort out the type of club that they want it to be. Um, but in terms of 
whether it's passport or cause-based clubs or um, corporate type clubs, don't get confused about it. Just just find 20 people. Um, and, and there's a huge amount of support within the district to, to help people with that. Ken, Ken, could I mention Robin Waterhoff offer? We've actually just been discussing that, you know, we're looking at sort of how we can improve the club, but what we're thinking at the moment is we might have an online club. Mm -hmm. Rather, and because a lot of people are unable to physically come to a meeting. But as we've found over the last five months, people from all, all over areas, wherever, can, will go online. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Robin. And I think some clubs are thinking about maybe a mix as well. well. That's the other way, yeah. Yeah, uh huh. Um, Cassie, do you want to come back in? Yeah, I just wanted to say let's not get too tied up with uh, models of Rotary models, Clubs. Yeah, There's absolutely. only one model of a Rotary Club, it's what you make it. And yeah. e clubs don't actually exist anymore, uh, they became just um, Rotary Clubs. And mm -hmm. my concern is we spend too much time, I don't mean on this evening, but I mean in general terms, we spend too mm -hmm. much time talking about what it might look like. So that um, for Robin just mentioning there from Forfar, that, that meet online, you know, meet, mm -hmm. meet in a, a pub, meet on the corner of the street, do anything. And, yeah. and in fact, maybe not meet, <laughs> maybe just go and do projects. Just go and um, do projects, I, absolutely. I, I've, I've confessed on the uh, group chat that I'm the person that wasn't interested in fellowship. But I've been quite interested to see what other people are saying. And that's because uh, in my club with the uh, younger people, if I mention fellowship, they fall about laughing because they yeah. know what it is. They're pals. They help each other. Um, you know, and, and I think I've, I've made the point before that uh, the group communicates quite a bit by WhatsApp. So there's a problem. Someone in the WhatsApp group says we need someone fairly quickly to get shopping for Mrs. Smith because their person's let her down, can anybody help? Yeah. And two minutes later, somebody's saying, that's okay, I'm on my way to Asda. So yeah. that's, that's what people want. Of course, of course. And, it's, and maybe just finally, it's something about instant gratification. And maybe <laughs> that is a bad thing at times. To feel good as you've done something for others. Yeah, so you want to do it again. It's just it's human yeah. nature, isn't it? And, you, and, and, and we're in it because that is the kind of thing that, that makes us tick. I think that's right. I think you're making an important point about language, which I think is a rotary challenge. And I think that all of this comes back to what do you know about the people in your community? What do you know about what they want? What do you know about what makes them tick? What does that community actually need? That's that relevance point again. Um, I can't see everybody. And the name that I've got with the hand up is iPad John. Sorry, that sounds like some kind of rapper moniker. But iPad John, if you if you want to come in. <laughs> okay. Do you know who that is, Ken? Sorry, I can't yeah, see. Hello, I'm from yeah. the How Club. So oh, hi, John. Gone. I'm going to make a couple of. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, a couple of comments. One of them goes back to a point you raised earlier. Uh, I have spoken to people, uh, younger people, but not for quite a long time, for the simple reason that when I did speak to younger people, uh, A, they had never heard of Rotary because Rotary in Britain, by and large, does not have a public profile. And I would say that the stance of RIBI uh, as a body is equivalent to somebody living in a house with a leaking roof and refusing to have it repaired. You simply cannot run any organization like this without hiring professional PR. The result of not doing it is evident every time there is a mention on broadcast television by whatever channel of the work of the Gates Foundation. The Gates Foundation should always, in my opinion, be mentioned and followed immediately by mentioning the partnership with Rotary. Why is it not done that way? Because we refuse to engage with the agencies 
and it would cost a little bit of money. We refused to engage with the agencies that would ensure that the wealth of information about what Rotary has achieved is broadcast to the public at large. The reason young people are, in my experience, not interested is one, they've never heard of it. Two, they don't understand that just local tell, uh, tales of what we've achieved are in, they, they do not see that as being sufficiently interesting. The second comment I would make is that although you can tell as many good stories as you want, a lot of the language that we're using, like words like fellowship, to a lot of young people, they either laugh at it because they don't understand or they associate it with um, evangelism or some other use of the term. We need to stop using archaic language and I have thought this ever since I joined, which must be about more than 10 years ago. A lot of the terms we use about the office bearers are archaic in the extreme as well. They're neo-colonial terms that we use, like district governor. We have to radically change and get better at communicating and do it professionally and invest a bit of money in it. Local efforts are all well and good, but they are not making any impression on the awareness of the public at large about what Rotary does, has achieved, and its continuing potential. Thanks, John. I think that's all fair. I think the, the thing that's clear from this discussion is that change is needed at all levels. And we can only change what is within our sphere of influence. So I guess tonight was always was always only going to be the start of a discussion. But what's what's you know we, there's a call to action here, isn't there? You know we need to not keep having the conversation, but actually take away that one thing we can do, the one thing our club can do, the one thing district can do, RGB and I, RI, and we need to use the spheres of influence that we've got as well. So it's been a really great um, chat. Um, yeah, as Ken says, you know, we're, we're the public image people, you know, and, and so points are well made, but if we're what we've got just now, you know, what are we going to do about it? So I've got one um, question to ask you honestly, because a, a lot of tonight has been about telling the story. And some of the public image changes um, recently have been about getting that out in a more user-friendly, palatable way um, through um, Rotary First, but also our own new 1010 vision, which I think is a really excellent uh, publication. We had a good chat yesterday about how we might actually take that and really get it chunked up and out onto social media as, as an example and really help to spread the word. But there's a huge story in there already that we could all be taking out there because it's just all about what, what Rotary's doing. But we need to stop just talking to ourselves. So what are we going to do with that story? So the honest question is, have you opened it and have you read it? Yes? Give me a thumbs up or a wave or an applause or something. Yep. Yep. Maybe. Okay, so for those of you that have, yeah, thanks Jennifer. I would really hope you have read it. <laughs> um, <laughs> or wrote it. Um, anybody that hasn't, can I just ask you to be, to be honest about why? And I don't mean in a kind of, absolutely don't mean in a naming and shaming kind of way. And I know, for example, I've definitely got Jennifer on tonight who's on the PI committee. I can't see anybody else who might be um, on the committee. But this is all about what can we do actually to get that out there? Because I, I really thought it was a it was a great a great thing. Kath? You're on mute, Kath, sorry. So we've got about four four more minutes. Right, so this is very brief. Uh, all I want to say is I have actually read it, um, but the majority of my club have not read it and will not read it because they don't see it as relevant to them. And they don't even open it to see whether it's relevant to them or not. So can we bear in mind that younger people, which the majority of my club is, mm -hmm. lead different lives. They, they, yeah. they're, they're moving at speed the whole time. So they're yeah. not going to do this sort of thing. Um, and, and well done to everybody who's done it. But just bear in mind, and if we're going to put it out to the public, bear in mind, short and sweet, so that yeah. you can get it. Yeah. Look back to... The last time we ever got into a doctor's waiting room or a hospital or anything like that did you ever see people sitting reading a magazine and the answer is no they don't 
well, and there's some some public health considerations that aren't going away anytime yes. soon about yeah. hard copy yeah. as well, yeah. I guess. But yeah. but yeah, no, the content's definitely there. It's how we capitalise on it. Yeah. I think, uh, John, um, as the Rotarian of the Month in the 1010 vision, uh, you may be getting the last word here, and quite rightly so. Would you like to come in? John, I gave you a big build up there and then nothing happened. John Mahinyak. I'll unmute myself now. Um, the, the comment about the Bill Gates thing, I can tell you professional advice has been used and failed miserably. Uh, it's sad really because Bill Gates himself is very, very complimentary about, uh, about Rotary. But I, but I think, um, I think during, during this evening, I've heard one or two people to say things like, people should know what Rotary does or they know what Rotary does. They don't. I, I think the starting point is you've got to assume that they know absolutely nothing about Rotary. And even what you do at the moment probably does need changing. But in fact, um, our founder said about 10 years after he formed Rotary, he was asked, is there anything you change? And he said, yes, everything. And, and I think we, we shouldn't presuppose that anybody knows anything about Rotary. And that would be the starting point for actually educating your local community to come and join you. But for goodness sake, don't sell them Rotary at the early stage. Sell them an idea of service, of cooperation, things yeah. they might enjoy. Of fun, of experience, absolutely. And something that's relevant to them and, and, and talk to them about it in a way that's relevant to them. Absolutely, yeah. John. I think that's a really good summary of um of how things um how things need to be i'm just reading this bit in the chat because it started radical change so it caught my imagination modernize or face the complete demise of the movement well indeed um fantastic oh sandy says the zoom meetings are great we've never talked too much among ourselves well you know what your call to action sandy tariff is go forth from zoom and get talking to everybody in your club <laughs> Right, now I'm conscious of everybody's time, Ken. I don't know if anybody's got any last points, but other than that, we're probably in a in a position where we can start to to pull it all together. Heather, yeah, thank you very much for hosting that tonight. That, that's been a great conversation. Um, I'll share the the chat with 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 you later on. Um, Heather put me in the spot earlier and says, "What do I say? Rotary is the best thing that ever happened to me." If you start with that line when you're going out and having a conversation you will get into the thing about what Rotary is all about. So thank you very much. Um, and the fact that 80% said probably or most likely would be a new club and a new format um, would be useful. I'm here to help. Um, next week, I haven't even thought about what the subject's going to be, but I think in two weeks we're looking at communication. Um, and particularly that's just a couple of days before the next 1010 vision goes out. Um, so we we'll look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you all very much for this week and thanks Heather indeed and we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thanks everybody. See you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night.